this podcast is to show you how to deal with some of the labeling features on SPSS. Very often when you try to follow the uh, tutorial on your own screen, you will find that the displays in some ways look different from whatever is on the on the screen and this can be quite off-putting so I'm going to show you three essential labeling functions in, in SPSS. Um, one and the simplest one is actually on the data screen itself. If you see what it calls up here value labels, if you click on that you will see that this column, ASD stroke control group, autism stroke control group, uh, changes from the values, which are whatever they are, I think they're 0 and 1, to the labels. Uh, and it'll go back again when I press it again. Yeah. 1 is the value, and the label for that is ASD group. That's the first control. And the reason it does that, if I go into va variable view, when you go into the uh, values button here, you will see that there are two labels that are being given um, for the values in this group. The control group is the label for value naught or other, put it the other way around. The coding um, for this variable, when it's given the value naught, it means the control group. When it's given the value one, it, it means the ASD group. And what happens when you toggle bit on that switch between label and value? is that it gives you either the control ASD group, either it gives you one of those two labels, or when you toggle back it gives you naught or one, depending on which group the participant belongs to. Notice, by the way, that SPSS has two distinct uses of the word label. The label in this box refers to the individual values of a variable. But confusingly, there is another use of the word label. I can only ask you to try to not be too confused by this or at least to bear in mind that confusion is possible. Otherwise you will end up wondering what the hell is going on. This label is not the one that's referred to in the toggle switch that I've just referred to. It is a different sort of label. We'll be coming onto that in a moment. This label is something that's available for you to spell out the meaning, more precisely the meaning of the variable, which has a very, perhaps a very laconic name here on the left-hand column. For example, this name, which I've condensed to BVAQ F3, actually is factor 3 score on a questionnaire. The reason I put that long label is, so if I come back weeks later and I've forgotten what this is, this will tell me. But that is a different label. That is not the same label as the referred to by the the uh, button on the data view which I've just shown you. So we come back to this. This is the uh, this toggles between the value and the label for a particular for the group to which a particular participant belongs. So that's that meaning of the word label. That is the first thing second thing is that when you want to start to analyze something like this, let's say you do a simple t-test, when the box comes up you will sometimes find that the name of the variable here is a long string, a rather long and excessively long string. And you may find that that is not, uh, that does not look the same as the, um, does not have the same appearance as the box in the, on the tutor's screen or in the podcast. So whatever it is. When that happens, there is a simple way to put that right, or at least to change to a different appearance. You won't want to necessarily want a name of a variable here which is so long that it ends in a kind of in an ellipsis like this. It's just not necessarily manageable. It's easier when you're working on data to have a short form of the name. So if that happens, the simple way to change it 
you go into edit options and for this you go into the general tab if it's not if it's clicked on one of the others click on the general tab and you simply go under variable lists the radio button display labels is currently clicked so I'm going to change that to display names just click OK on that when I now go back to doing the t-test you see that the variables have gone back to their abbreviated names and for some purposes it's a lot more convenient to have this rather than long strings of names the labels which you which you put into the variable view can have no other purpose than to remind you to explain what the variable is doing and this can be a rather long-winded business probably best to use names and labels and what I've just shown you is how you do that okay what I'm going to talk about now is relates not to the display in the data screen which is the one that toggles between values of la and labels nor is it the display when you come to do your analysis when you get the box up and you find long-winded names of variables in the in the box I'm referring to what the output looks like now for this I'm going to give you a an example I'm going to do a correlation here I've already put the three variables in the right hand box so I just press OK and here we have bivariate correlations what I want to direct your attention to is the fact that in this display mode the uh, the names you get here of the variables are the brief names that you've given them the short name version it may be that that's what you want in the course of your work but it may be for publication you want a more attractive version you want something a little more descriptive than just this this laconic BVAQ F3 if you want to do that the route to do it is again through edit and options but this time you need to go to output labels and you need to go to the third one of these one two three pivot table labeling at the moment I've got variables and labels shown as names if I now change that to labels, now I'm going to do this calculation again and I'll show you how the appearance changes. By the way, if you want to repeat an operation you've recently done, there is a very quick shortcut method which I would strongly recommend to you. It will save you a long time. If you click on this, if you put, make your pointer hover over this box, recently used dialogues, by clicking on that you can then simply you can you can bring up an operation you've done some while ago or just click on the one you've just done and it comes right back up again now if I do that again you will see that instead of BBAQ3 you've got a nice you've got the label in fact which you've previously put in so if you want to put some nice descriptive account of what this variable is that's another way in which you can use that label box you can use it to remind you what's going on or you can change that and say and you can use something that is suitable for publication so there are three aspects in which you you may want to change variables labels etc you can by the way if you want to go back in the data set you, you press you press that you can either change the appearance on the data set itself or you can go into uh, you can change the appearance when you do your calculation and you do that by going to edit options uh, general tab and display names and labels so I'm going to just going to show you what happens remind you what happens with that um, now when I go back I get I get this long-winded version of, of what the variable looks like and I'm going to reset that because I I don't think it's very helpful or you can go back in and you can change the change what it looks like in the output and for that you go into the output labels and because it takes up less room I'm going to go back to names if you get names and labels it does what it says in the tin and you get them both um, and so now if I go back in to correlations I'm getting back I'm going to 
put those three in the right hand side and I'll get the short version again. Okay, I'm now going to show you how to change the format of this of this box to make it uh, conformable to American Psychological Association format, which is what you need for putting the contents into publication. You right click on the box, go into Edit Content in separate window. At this point you go into Format and Table Looks. You now have a whole range of options to choose from on the left hand side. If you click on Academic, that is basically what you need for publication. You can save that look so that everything appears in that format. Click OK. And there you are. What what it does is it gets rid of the vertical lines. I'm actually going to go back in and I'm I'm going to go back into the system the default and save that look because I don't actually want it to be um, saved as academic. But for this one, go back into academic, OK, and close that down. You now have a table in basically ABA format.